embarrassment to my son. This is Aiden over here, and he's studying in Paris this semester, and he's speaking <laughs> French beautifully. It sounds that way to me. But anyway, I don't speak any French except for French arts and au revoir. And um, something about vin blanc sec? I don't know. <laughs> I wanted some dry white wine. Anyway, so uh, let's get started. Thing will work. It worked a minute ago. Okay, so um, Alan already mentioned that I'm a threat researcher with a company called YDOPS, and I've only been there since September, um, so I'm quite new, but it's a really interesting company. We do uh, ad fraud detection, so like tracking down botnets that are stealing money through advertising, basically. So, pretty cool space. Um, I might mention more than once that we're hiring and we need like data scientists and software engineers and threat hunters and things like that. Um, I also so, so you're going to teach us how to hack your hunting process. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, something like that. I can definitely help you out with white ops. Do you so, have an office in Bordeaux? That's well, so this is the cool thing about the company. They open offices where the people are. So we have, and I really didn't this the whole pitch, but anyway. Um, so right now we are based in New York City. We have an office in London, which is basically three guys from Google and who came to work for us. We have an office in Buenos Aires and an office in Victoria, Canada. So really it is where the people are. So I'm pretty sure we could put together some kind of French office. Okay. <laughs> I know, I already want to hire you for sure. <laughs> um, anyway, so I also have my own consulting company, Fractal Security Group, and I'm a professor at a few different universities um, back in the States, which is where I'm from, obviously. I live um, in Maryland, which is near Washington, D.C., probably would be the best point of reference. Um, I am a self-proclaimed, not just self-proclaimed, pretty well-known packet nerd. I love looking at network traffic. That's like one of my favorite things to do. Um, I love following phishing campaigns, so just tracking it down from that initial malicious link or document like we heard about earlier, all the way through to the ultimate like site that does whatever bad things. Um, and I've had so many interviews, lots and lots of interviews. I've also given quite a few as well. Uh, so, so that's why I dreamed up this talk, and I actually gave a variation of this talk at DEF CON this year, so this is a little bit of a reboot. I added some things about France and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, so, so I just thought it might be interesting to share some of my knowledge and experiences in that space. But keep in mind that I'm not an HR person, I'm not an attorney. Oh, HR is human resources. I don't know what you would call it in France. Human resources? Yeah. It's also yeah. RH. Yeah. Okay. Because we, because we flip everything. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a tech person like you all. I just happen to do other stuff too. And, oh, there it's working. Okay, so my uh, obligatory meme from Matrix, of course, you must have that. Uh, so, who here? Oh, no, I don't want to ask a question that could be awkward, but <laughs> is anybody here? interested in possibly having another job at some point in time. Yeah, a few people. I mean, truthfully, there's always something like brighter on the horizon, so. All right, so what we're gonna do is kind of go through some different steps of my methodology <laughs> on how to go about finding a better job or a different job or, or whatever. So the first part of this really is defining like what you want in a job. And I see a lot of people I do a lot of mentoring too, so that's kind of where, you know, I talk to a lot of people about their job searches. Um, people don't say to themselves, what do I want in a job? They're just like, oh, I'll just apply to this company or, or whatever. There's some reason maybe, but not necessarily. It's kind of a blind pursuit at times. So this is an important thing to decide. So I just put like a little sort of word cloud of different things that you could want in a job, right? So, do you like to travel, or do you not want to travel? I personally love traveling, but not everybody wants to do that, right? Um, do you need Nerf friends in your office? Do you have Nerf friends in France? Yeah. Oh, okay, all right, so you're not this one. Um, do you want a flexible schedule? You know, these are just all things to consider, and some companies are gonna offer, offer some of these things, and some aren't. And then, you also want to think about where you want to work, right? So. 
different organizations are going to have different kind of environments. So if you work at Google, that's definitely one kind of vibe. Has anybody here ever been to a Google office? Yeah, it's kind of different. They have like their own culture, for sure, there. There's bicycles everywhere. It's kind of fun. Um, does anybody recognize that building at the top? Yeah. Pentagon, exactly. So you might want to work in that space. The government, you know, defense side of things, that's also a possibility. Um, oh, so this will be, I don't have any prizes, but if I had a prize, does anybody know what this lower image is? Steve Jobs garage? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's right. definitely a garage. Yeah, but it's a UK garage. Yes, it is a UK garage. So this is actually um, the person who founded Lotus, the car, out of their garage. I'm not quite sure how you like start building cars in your garage, but <laughs> apparently they did. So, so yeah, so things to think about. So like for me, WhatUps is uh, a startup. You know, they're a venture-funded, <coughs> only been around for a few years company, but I'm okay with taking, you know, that kind of gamble because it's kind of exciting. But, you know, not everybody wants to. All right, and then figuring out what you actually want to do, and, and this is more for people who are just getting started out in the field, but I hear a lot of people say that they want to do cybersecurity. And saying that you want to do cybersecurity, is, it's like saying, I want to do medicine. And, and what does that mean? Do you want to be a doctor, a brain surgeon? Do you want to be like an x-ray tech? It could be so many different things. And cyber is the same way. So trying to figure out what your path, what your niche is, is, is super important. So I put a little reference up there to the uh, NICE Cybersecurity Workforce Framework. Has anybody come across that? It's kind of an American thing, but yeah. So I'll actually, let me just show you right now, because it's a really useful website for people who are kind of figuring things out. And I conveniently have a tab open. Of course. So, um, so this was something that was developed by NIST, which is the National Institute for Standards and Technology in the States. They come up with all these regulations for how to secure things and, and whatnot. But they came up with this um, sort of like a, like a categorization of all these different job areas. And let me make this a little bigger. It's a really useful place to start if you're just not quite sure what you want to do, right? So, <clears throat> so like one of the areas is analyze, and then there's different kinds of analysis within here, and then collect and operate, so on and so forth. But it, it drills right down into like what are the skills and knowledge that you need for like each of these types of positions, so it's super useful for um, ex exploration, I would say. And also, at least in the States, we're seeing more and more adoption from the side of companies in terms of using these categories when they're trying to hire people. So, because I'm not sure, sorry, about how it is here. I'll say this like a thousand times, but um, for us, like you could have like a cyber analyst and maybe a threat analyst and a security analyst, the security engineer, and like, they're all probably the same job more or less, but they're just called a million different things. So consistency in that area is, is definitely a struggle for us. All right, so, Next step of the process, now that you've figured out what you want, maybe where you want to work, or at least sort of where you want to work, you need to understand the players. So this should be pretty familiar to most people. This is basically the interview or the recruiting process. So you send your resume or CV off to some website, right? And the first person, and I say person loosely, who's going to read your resume is a bot. Right? It's going to scan your resume, looking for keywords, and there's a little trick to this too about making sure that you match up with the keywords. But um, but if you don't if you don't hit literally like whatever their algorithm is for for are you a fit for this job, you'll never get past that first step. So beating the bot is really like the first thing you have to do. And then you're going to get um, contacted by the actual recruiter. So the recruiter is not going to be a technical person, at least not like 95% of the time. They're going to be somebody who works in HR or RH or whatever we call it. And they're going to ask you like questions that are more to determine if you're just like a semi-sentient human being, I guess. And so they might ask you like a few technical questions. They won't have any idea what the answers are, but they will just see if you say some of the appropriate words in response. 
So if you make it past that, and I'm sure you probably have all done this, then you go to like the hiring manager interview, so maybe the boss type person or the team lead or whatever, get past that, and there are variations, but this is more or less what I've experienced, and then you get to the, uh, the sort of final team interview, which is typically a panel interview. Has anybody here had a panel interview? They're so much fun, aren't they? <laughs> panel interview by phone? Oh, so I love those so much. No, I don't. But um, yeah, panel interviews can be painful because you're talking to several different people at the same time. Panel interview by phone where you can't tell who you're talking to. It's really confusing. Like somebody will ask you a question, and I'm like, was that Bob or was that Joe? I don't know. So anyway, it can be awkward. So these are just things to sort of mentally prepare yourself for because if you don't, you're going to get maybe hung up in some of the steps. And uh, yeah, so it's so important. And if you have questions, by the way, or comments, feel free to jump in. I tend to be kind of interactive. So if you don't ask me questions, I'll ask you questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you keep the white? Um, keywords in white. Yeah, so I hear that all the time. Um, if you're not familiar with this technique, you take like all the keywords from the job posting and sprinkle them out through your, your resume just using like white fonts so it's not obvious. So like all in the header and the footer. Yeah, I mean, it does work, I think. I personally find it a little deceptive, but then again, you know, this is like kind of a battle to get your foot in the door, so. I'll say whatever works. So I'll tell you what I do recommend is there's um, a couple of websites out there. Well, I'm sure more than a couple, but websites that will do um, you know the the tag clouds for you. So you take the resume or the job posting, dump it into this website. It'll give you the word frequency thing, right? So you'll see it says cyber, cyber, cyber a million times, and then it'll say you know whatever else they want. So just kind of tune your resume so that it matches up with that. That's a pretty good technique slightly less <laughs> deceptive. Um, all right, oh yeah, ask questions. So this is something I found too. People are a little shy about asking questions in this whole process, right? But it's really important to understand who you're talking to. So like when you get that first like recruiter person who's not really technical, you don't want to get like crazy with the acronyms and stuff with them because they're not gonna have any idea what you're talking about. So I always ask, like, when I get to a step, you know, where I'm talking to somebody, I will say, are you doing a technical interview or are you a technical person? And, you know, they either say yes or no, and then I kind of know how to gauge my answers accordingly. Um, so in the same vein, get names and positions and, and understand the roles of everybody. I mean, you might be interviewing with, like, the CEO of the company. If you haven't done the research, then you would have like no idea. You might think it's the recruiter. So, really important to to do this sort of thing. But you know, I mean, everybody in this field is kind of a researcher. Like, I'm really good at Google. Raina, I think, is good at Google. <laughs> so, Google is your friend for sure. It, you can find out lots of stuff before you do anything. Which leads me to this. Step. So, recon or reconnaissance first phase of pen test slash attack, basically. Um, we need to do that too in this process, so do your homework. Uh, so research the company. Coincidentally, I have wide ups up here. Did I mention that we're recruiting? <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, and it's, it's actually from France, so it's a French page, sort of. Anyway, so, so if I'm looking into a company, I'm gonna find out as much as I possibly can about them. This is just like a starting point, right? But clearly the website is gonna be your number one go-to source for, for information about that organization. I'm gonna look at things like, certainly their, their blog posts, like what are they writing about? What are they working on? What's, what's interesting to them? Um, who the company leadership is interesting? Um, what they do on social media? All these things are clues for you. So the kinds of things to focus on in your interview. Um, so like, so knowing what they do about like botnets and whatnot, for me doing an interview there, or many interviews there actually, I knew that you know, I had a lot of the technical skills that came you know, to the position, but I didn't have any experience with like ad fraud. But, so I focused on botnet activity that I knew from different like campaigns and things like what uh, 
talking about earlier. So, so that totally worked. Since I'm there, obviously. And then don't forget about the part where they're going to Google you, right? So most employers are going to see what they can find about you. Or even if it's not the recruiter doing it, although the recruiter will, um, the people who are going to interview you are probably going to look you up and see, do you have a Twitter account? Do you have a LinkedIn account? Do you have a Facebook account? Please don't use Facebook for work stuff. That's just awful. I don't know. Is Facebook a thing here? I don't know. <laughs> It's, it's sadly a thing for us, too. Less so. <laughs> What's that? Less and less so. Yeah, um, well, I know, right? In, at universities or schools, you get people um, being shown their own exploits, yes. so to speak, on yeah. Facebook, and less and less they post shit on Facebook. <laughs> right. Just because, you know, and, and then, I have a perfect example for this, the rare you name is. Yes, you're easy to find. It is for you to just be on top of the world mm -hmm. whenever someone puts your name there. So count on it, people will Yeah, same thing for me so, too. It's not hard to find me at all on, on the interwebs. Uh, so, so, you know, I'm not saying to like censor yourself, but you know, just be aware of, of what you have out there. Um, and, and if you're trying to like sort of develop certain areas, like, do you have a GitHub page? Are you on Stack Exchange? Things like that. You know, sometimes you want to like come to the top because it's going to be helpful for you in your job thing. This, like, I I recommend against having a profile on LinkedIn that looks like this, which is basically nothing, no photo, and just a very general um, sort of description. Because, and I know this from recruiters that who told me so. If you have like a very sketchy looking, not filled in LinkedIn profile, they tend to think there's something wrong. Like if you have no picture, they're like, why do they have no picture? <laughs> so just things to think about. All right. Okay. So, so now we've gotten through all of this. We've found a place we sort of like. We are called in for a proper interview. So what do we do next? Okay. So a couple kinds of interviewing, right? Um, these days, there's a lot of remote interviewing. Um, I've had I've had re I've had interviews like sitting in the parking lot in my car at like a department store or what would you call a department store here? Yeah, there's. <laughs> and, uh, and I've had, um, yeah, I've been all over the place with interviews, but. Uh, even if you are in your car or whatever, you want to try to make the background as conducive as possible to sounding professional. So, no dogs barking, babies crying, cats meowing, whatever kind of pet you have. Um, and, you know, even dress the part. I mean, chances are maybe it's a Skype interview and they'll see you from here up. Maybe you just wear pants anyway, just in case you stand up. I must forget. I'm naked if you're going to make me wear pants. Oh, and wait, and pants I know mean something different in England, but you know, trousers, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, so things to think about. Okay, and then if you're doing an in person interview, which in my experience, like most of the interviews, you know, they start out as a remote thing, a phone call or Skype or whatever. Um, but at some point in time, you're probably going to have an in-person interview. And one of the things that I think is super important, especially in our industry, is dressing the part. So, um, and I don't know, do you all, do you have Criminal Minds here in the TV show? Yeah, so I love Criminal Minds. And then this, of course, um, Yes, yeah, Lisbeth from Girl Dragon Tattoo, and that's just a random stock art person. <laughs> but um, but it's, it's important to understand the culture of where you're going in to interview, because you don't want to roll up in a suit and everybody's wearing like jeans and, you know, t-shirts. And this is another place where it's okay to ask the question, you know, say, what should I wear? Um, and I used to think you couldn't go wrong with wearing a suit, but I've changed my, my mind about that. Because, yeah, sometimes I'm just going to think you're too, like, stuffy or whatever, exactly. Um, and you can totally look like Elizabeth if that's the right environment, too. But, like, I, if I was going for a job at the Pentagon, I probably would take out at least some of, like, you know, all the metal and stuff. <laughs> Well, you, wouldn't get, you wouldn't get past it. I don't know. I'm going to say I'm going to for sure. But yeah, so just things to think about. Um, 
in fact, like uh, my friend Nancy here was asking, like, was I going to dress up for this talk today? To me, this is dressing up for me, son. So, you know, it just, again, it depends on your audience. Um, oh, and a quick shout out to uh, the B-Sides thing, because I know it's not like a huge thing here in France, but I love B-Sides conferences. They're like my favorite cons ever, so thanks, Alan, for putting this on. No, thank everybody here for wanting to come to yeah. Bordeaux to talk technical. So, yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to have like a B-Sides Paris next year, I don't know, B-Sides someplace. Um, yeah, so where I live, we have we have B-Sides DC, B-Sides Nova, which is North Virginia, B-Sides Delaware, B-Sides Philly, B-Sides Charm, which is Baltimore. So I'm kind of lucky because I have like so many B-Sides. Oh, well, that's a four hour drive, so that's a bit far. But it's America. We can drive four hours, it's nothing. Um, so yeah, so they're just a fabulous sort of more community-based thing, and, and I just like the intimacy. This is a very intimate group. I hope to get to meet everybody before we leave. Okay, so some other things to think about. Oh, yeah, don't be late. Like, if there's one thing that you can bomb your interview before you even start, is turning up late. I mean, stuff happens, but try to avoid it. And this is coming from somebody who's like always late, so. Um, making eye contact, that's a huge thing. Apparently, you're also supposed to make eye, con eye contact when you do cheers here, my son has told me. Mm -hmm. You know, but I didn't know that, so I got to work on that. So we'll have to practice cheers later and see how that goes. Um, so taking notes. So I always take notes during an interview, and I actually do it on like a notepad and paper because I don't want the person to think I'm really just like, you know, playing like Sudoku or something, <laughs> tweeting about the interview. This company is shit. I don't work here. <laughs> um, so. So yeah, but I ask first, you know, I'm like, oh, do you mind if I take notes? And, you know, I've never had anybody say, yes, they mind it. Except for, well, I did work at the DOD for a while, so I don't think I took notes there. I don't think you were allowed to bring in a piece of paper, but um, anyway. And then taking breaks. So the taking breaks thing sounds weird, but sometimes technical interviews can be really long, or you're just meeting with like a series of people. So I have a few like, interview war stories. Would you all like to hear an interview war story? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> I interviewed with this one company that makes an extremely well-known product in the sort of intrusion detection space. And they told me coming in, the recruiter tells me, he's like, expect to be there for six hours. And I know. <laughs> and, and they're like, the first thing you will do when you get there is order lunch. And I was like, OK. And that's because, theoretically, you will have been there long enough to have lunch. And if you survive the six hours, you, you will likely get a job. So, so anyway, so I'm there. I ordered my lunch. I feel like everybody's sort of looking to see what I ordered because they're going like, to fight over who gets to have it because I would have been long booted out of the process. <laughs> but, um, anyway, so, so it was uh, started out as a panel interview with several people. and. Then it went to like a one-on-one -on -one with each of these people individually, where they asked me to do different things. And mostly what I was doing, or being asked to do was, and this might be a clue as to who the company was, I was asked to write snort rules for various things <laughs> on a whiteboard in front of people, just off the top of my head. And this was sort of painful. So I did this for a while. And about the time that I was losing the will to live, and <laughs> I might have had a tear in my eye because it was so brutal, um, I was like, oh, right, isn't it time for lunch? <laughs> so anyway, so I made it four and a half hours, and I did not get the job. Um, so it was a particularly unpleasant experience. But the funny thing is, is like a couple years later, they reached out to me and recruited me for a position. And so I went through all the preliminary steps and whatnot. And then they're like, right, we'd like you to come in for an interview. It's going to be six hours long. And I was just like, oh, you know what? I've actually done that before, in all fairness, and I don't want to do it again. So I just walked away from it at that point. So anyway, that's one story. I have more. OK, so yeah, so taking breaks in that case, for sure. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I was doing some research about job interviews in France, and like literally more than one site said, 
do not kiss like the person you're interviewing, because you kiss each other a lot, right? In reading, I suppose? No. We don't do this in the States. I would assume none of us would do this in an interview, but I just thought it was kind of funny, because it was mentioned more than once. <laughs> there, is, there is a caveat to that in the United States, though, and I've heard this from multiple recruiters. Yeah. Don't ask out your recruiter. She doesn't want to hear that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably, yes. probably. Anyway, so, um, all right, so I'm going to talk about technical questions and non-technical questions. So I'm going to start with the non-technical questions. These ones are no-brainers. Even if you look at them now and you're like, oh, I don't really know what I would say in answer to that, there's no reason that you cannot come up with answers for all these things between now and the next time you have an interview because they're standard questions, right? Um, how do you stay current in the industry? Somebody tell me how they stay current in the industry. Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. Right. Twitter and Facebook. Come here. <laughs> Come here, yes, go to cons, absolutely. What was another one somebody said I thought? Did you say a different one? Yeah, okay. Blogs. Blogs, yes, absolutely. Podcasts. I'm a huge podcast person, I love that. Um, so yeah, so just have these ideas or these answers in your head before you get there. Because they're not hard, but they'll throw you off in the course of an interview if you haven't really like, thought about it. And you have to think about it for a while, then they're going to be like, mm -hmm. I don't think they are current, maybe. So other things, why are you leaving your current position? Like, never bad now, say bad things, right? We all know that. Um, biggest weakness, biggest strength. That's like so hard, right? So my, my goal is to spin the weakness so it sounds like a good thing and make the strength sound awesome without sounding like I'm totally bragging. So <laughs> it takes a little practice. You have to think about it. Um, say perfectionism. Yeah, perfectionism. That's, That's great. The, you know, your go-to excuse like, I'm perfectionist. So you understand, I, I can be a little bit too requiring. I understand that this is, you know, putting people off. I, you know, strive for high quality. <laughs> I love that one. I don't think I've used that. I'm going to use that. Oh, my. <laughs> Not that I'm interviewing at the moment. I just started a new job. But I love that. Um, yeah, sometimes I say, like, negative is, like, I'm really bad at delegating because I really just want to make sure that, you know, everything's perfect, more or less. So similar. Um, yeah, the rest of them. I'm not going to read all of them. I keep leaving my answer over here. It's not very useful there. All right. So... So what do you do in your spare time? I've been asked this many, many times in an interview. And like I said, it can be tricky. Like what you say in response to this can totally like bias the, the person interviewing you. So in our field, you know, saying you're building your home lab, that gets everybody excited, right? And if you don't have a home lab, you should have a home lab, just saying. Even you, Nancy. <laughs> um, studying for, you know, a certification or course or whatever, um, volunteering for a coding camp, uh, taking security classes. Oh, these all actually, well, I'm forgetting that I have them aligned with each other. So scrapbooking. There's nothing wrong with scrapbooking. Do the same thing with spending time with my kids. Nothing wrong with spending time with your kids, but you just reveal some personal information about yourself that they don't need to know, right? Um, volunteering at church. Again, this is nothing wrong with that, right? But you're bringing up a possible area where they're going to start thinking, oh, well, what church do they go to? Oh, what religion are they? You know, things like that. You're opening doors. Basket weaving, again, just not very relevant. And I don't know, gaming, it kind of depends actually on who you're talking to because it might be somebody who's a total gamer as well. They're like, oh, you've been playing Fortnite lately? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, who isn't playing Fortnite? So that's interesting because I just yeah. had an interview a few months ago where basically I said, I mean, I spent, I literally spent my, 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 spent my time doing security, right? Yeah. I mean, it's either as a job or... It's kind of a lifestyle. It's kind of a lifestyle, Ooh. exactly. The person I was interviewing was with, like, don't you do anything else? <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. I'm like, I go see movies and like go out and have nice wines and nice dinners, right? That's about it. Yeah. But so it's focusing, so I mean, I'm not, I, I agree with you on this yeah, side, yeah, yeah. right? No, I but say focusing that. on what you label as good, it might make you seem a little maybe. Especially for some of the newer startup type companies, like because this was one of the big cloud companies. Yeah. 
So that kind of attitude doesn't necessarily fit with the culture of the enterprise. Yeah, well, no, business. absolutely. And this is where you have to gauge your audience. This yeah. is all dependent on gauging your audience. So, I mean, if they have a lot of baskets all over their office, like baskets everywhere, then maybe taking basket weaving classes is going to be a good answer. I don't know. It just depends, right? Um, all right. Going through. <laughs> Oops, shoot. It's like slow mo uh, advancing. Now I'm trying to go backwards. All right, so who here has an elevator pitch? Or do we call it an elevator pitch? Sure. A little like 30 seconds, 30 seconds about yourself. <laughs> so everybody should have one of these because you will be asked this in an interview and you'll be asked it in other places too. In fact, like after this, I'm going to go around and ask everybody, what, <laughs> tell me about yourself. What do you do? Um, but no, it's just, it's good to have just something quick that uh, you can say about yourself. All right, so technical questions. This is the fun part. So this is hard when you're going on technical interviews, right? Because there's so many things that they could ask you, and it's really hard to prepare. But the other part, easy peasy to prepare, but not this. So these are examples of questions that I have gotten multiple times. Um, in fact, OK, so a funny story about TCP three-way handshake. Who knows what TCP three-way handshake is? OK, and it's OK if you don't. Fine. It's always better to say you don't know instead of pretending. But I had one interview after a series of many, sort of like back to back, and they did not ask me what the TCP three-way handshake was. And I kept kind of waiting for it. I'm like, it's going to come, it's going to come. And then it never did. So at the end of the interview, when they asked me, do you have any questions for us? Guess what I asked them? I was like, how come you didn't ask me what the TCP three-way handshake was? But um, anyway. I don't think they were amused, actually, by that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so these are, they're not just examples. They're ones that I have literally gotten many, many times. And look, there's even more than one page, because there's so many. Um, seems like kind of simple things, but it can throw you off, you know, when somebody asks you these questions. And this is, I'm trying to cover a broad range of topics here, but that's typically the, the, what the, you get. The, the, the favorite one, for sure, is, uh, what happens when you type up something in the URL bar in a browser? Mm -hmm. Oh, right, right. That one is similar that to like one. how does email work? But yeah, yeah. 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 It's, yeah, it's even worse though because right. it's really a little bit deep in the book. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I know. But if they asked me, I'd step through like every yeah. layer of the TCP. Oh, I had, I, had an, I, I, I had an argument with the, the guy that was, that was interviewing me about this one. Well, you know, that's actually. Because, because the problem is that I have another problem, right? So I'm going to hijack your discussion. <laughs> for just a second. For a second. For okay. a second, but I've been in this industry for over 30 years, right? Yeah. And when you're facing somebody, even on the phone, who you can tell is a lot younger than you, because I was a researcher, people mm -hmm. whatever, were interviewing me, and they start asking this question, and I'm like, what exactly do you want to know, right? right. Because for me, and I've been a consultant as well, so it's, it's a back and forth of questions. Right. But when the interviewer tells you, and I've written a blog post about this, I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you yeah, later. But basically, when the interviewer then tells you, no, just tell me what you want, what you want to talk about. It's like I don't find that as an I don't find that a bad answer because if you're actually trying to hire somebody in like a consulting type role, you want that person to be asking questions and to be evolving right. the discussion so you get to the precision. And when you have an interviewer that's basically just telling you, no, just describe to me what happens, just describe right. to me what happens, you're not engaging the discussion. No, I know, I know. You also wonder if they have any idea what you're even talking about. You could yeah. be like, you know, because I mean that, 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 that browser mean, question, yeah. I can go from. The point where the stupid application developer doesn't know how to fucking, you know, basically yeah. starts DNS querying every time you type a letter, which is a waste of time, yeah. all the way down to how do you build a TCP IP stack, right? right exactly. It, I mean, and depending on the OS, it's going to change and how you, you know, how yeah. you package the stuff. And, and this is where you kind of have to let the interviewer drive you a little bit with it, because like, if something like that happens, which it has to me before, certainly, and I'll start going into like this long-winded explanation of how things work, and then I'm trying to gauge whether their eyes are glazing over or not, and you know, figure that's, out what's the right level of response. But that's the problem, is these, mo these modern interviewers <laughs> don't drive the discussion. They just want you to talk. Yeah. And it's because they don't know how to do it. Basically. They don't know how, well, not one, they don't know how to do it. And, and I have a s s strong suspicion that when they're interviewing somebody who's been around for a long oh, time, they're afraid of you, right? And yeah. They're afraid that you're going to come in and take They're looking at their little 
cheat sheet up. Yeah. Wait, did he say sin and act? I don't know. So, yeah. <laughs> no, you lose them in PGP generally. <laughs> exactly. Now, the last time I was interviewed, it was like, so how does the internet work? Yeah. Oh, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> like, which year? I think the white boy. My first question is, which year? <laughs> no, because she wasn't, she wasn't sure I was the right fit for the position yeah. because she was searching for someone with an engineer diploma from a you know, right, right. school in France. And then I was like, yeah. 